All right, guys, it's Emily from Emerge Elite. If you already know me, then hi. And uh, if you don't, welcome to the family. Right, so Craig from Grey Wolf Fitness has just tagged me in the mind tag. Even though I'll let it slide that he only tagged me in the last 15 seconds, and it was because Sue prompted him to. So credit to you, Sue, you're my girl. And I'm also the only woman that he tagged in it, so that's even better because he said women would probably go on for about three hours, and you know, guess what? I'm ready for three hours. No, I'm not. <laughs> so basically the whole point of mind tag is just to answer questions which are based on your mind and your mindset, which I think is a really great thing to do, and with the channel that I currently have, I like to express a good mindset, so we might as well just delve right into it. Question number one. How do you stay positive in tough times? A massive way that I find personally to stay positive in really tough times, times that test me, is to remind myself that it's not over. A particular situation could be over, a particular point in your life could be over, but it isn't over. The, the broad, broad perspective of life is not over, which can only mean that you can do something else or you can be someone else or you can go somewhere else. And to be honest, that makes me feel really good. Like I have this whole world in front of me that I can do whatever I want with. So I stay positive by keeping myself motivated and that is difficult and if you are going through a tough time that is severely difficult i've recently just done a podcast about that things are not meant to be easy and this question kind of goes straight into it to stay positive through tough times you're not going to be positive for the whole time okay let, like, we're, let's be honest here but you will get better and be sad embrace it Embrace the fact that you have an emotion or an attachment to something. Um, and if you lost it, then it hurts. You know, like I've seen people who have, who have gone through tough times and they don't embrace it. They don't embrace the, the mourning process of it. And in the long run, they only suffer. So I think in tough times, you have to accept the situation. You have to accept what's happening. And you have to remind yourself that it, it's just a set period of time that is tough. It's not your whole life. Question number two. Oh, I'm swearing at you. Sorry, two, two. Or it's peace in America, I don't know. Question number two. At this point, what makes you happy? This is a question, this is the question on here that I didn't really want to answer because there's a lot of things that make me happy. There are a lot of things in my life that make me happy. I have, I have a house, I have a job, I have my friends and my family and stuff like that. But I was, I was really thinking deep, very spiritually about what makes me happy. And for a second, I got really ashamed that it's me. I make myself happy. And that has actually come to light quite recently, um, within the last year, that I've learned to self-love myself and my situation and my own current mindset. I've always been the person who couldn't settle and can't sit still and always is looking for the next thing. People used to laugh about it, but that makes me happy. The way that I am, the way that I'm wired and the way that I speak and interact and the way that I, I want to give positivity to other, other people, that's what makes me happy. Also that and pizza. Pizza makes me really happy. It's a miracle I say this, this slim. Number three. When did you feel most out of place? School. Um, which is ironic because I've just agreed to go to a high school reunion But school is where I felt out of place. I Wasn't the brainy kid though. My best friends were getting straight A's um, 
I was just the kid that kind of put her head down and, and walked through and waited for it to be over. And then the second it was over, I ran away, you know, I, I moved to a different place. I couldn't wait to get out of my hometown. So that's where I felt the most out of place. I felt, that is where I felt like my, me and my mind, even though I didn't really understand it at that point and definitely with my sexuality and stuff. At that point in my life, that's where I really didn't fit in. And I don't think people understood that. They understand it now, you know, the, the girls that I'm gonna go and see at the end of next month, they know who I am now and they accept it and that's amazing. But in school I felt very out of place. Number four. What is your most inner voice like? My inner voice is a bitch. My inner voice is horrible. I love her, but she's horrible. My inner voice is like an alter ego. If you meet me in person, I'm quite sarcastic and I, I, I will happily make jokes about myself before I make jokes about others. And I'm cool with that. You know, that's the way that I am. My inner voice is a lot more harsh. My inner voice doesn't understand that sometimes sometimes I'm not the best possible version of myself. She doesn't understand that. So she'll either beat me down for it or she'll tear me apart with it. My inner voice is a bit of a demon and I don't like her. She also makes me eat a lot of pizza, so... But that's probably the best part about her. Right. Number five. What words do you use to keep yourself grounded? I love this saying. Like, I love this saying that I say, and people think I'm so blunt. Um, the words that keep me grounded is that I'm gonna die. And it's true. And it's true to everyone. I'm gonna die someday. And on that day, I do not want to be there thinking that I didn't do it and that I didn't, I didn't grab the balls and go for it. I've tried to start doing YouTube maybe seven times now and every time I set for the last two times have failed. And it is, you know, it keeps, it keeps me very aware of life and very aware of my impact on it and my impact on other people's lives. Because honestly, I know it's not gonna happen with everyone, but I would really hate for me to die and someone say a bad word about me. That keeps me grounded. Right, number six. We're nearly done now. Uh, it's not three hours yet though, so you know, these last two questions could go on for a while. What have you changed about your attitude that you admire? This is another question I don't like. <laughs> I've changed my perspective on life in the last so if we go back to 2015 um the middle middle would it be in the middle no towards the end of 2015 i was in a very bad mental state um i became very solitary very much a lone wolf and the only thing i did was go to the gym about two three hours an evening i hardly socialized i hardly spoke to people I was either studying, playing video games, working, or in the gym. And I got into this autopilot phase, and I didn't get out of it for a long time. The end of 2015 and the beginning of 2016 is where I changed my attitude. I was very fortunate that definitely at the beginning of 2016, I met, I met some amazing people. And they reminded me that it's okay to not be okay, but you can't dwell in it. And that goes back to, you know, the whole, the other questions that I've answered. Um, I'm very fortunate of these people. I'm very lucky. And it changed my attitude because in this last year, I have actually tried to push myself so freaking hard that sometimes I thought I was gonna explode but I was still able to carry on and I was still able to work and I didn't crack and but in 2015 it was something simple that made me break it wasn't anything traumatic it wasn't anything really horrible I just 
I just secluded myself from the world and now you know now you're you're looking at this channel and here I am and yes I'm not I've not got a six pack anymore and I'm you know I'm not I'm not what people would call desirable anymore um, but I'm happy and my attitude has changed and I'm start I'm about to encounter one of the biggest challenges and the most thrilling thing I have ever done in my life and I'm so excited for it and my attitude is completely different to the way that I work number seven last one how do you work on your inner voice if I'm being honest which honesty is the best policy I used to tell myself that I don't care so if my inner voice was talking to me which makes me sound slightly crazy but if she was trying to beat me down I'd literally just be like, look, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, I don't care, da da da. And I would do it until it would come out of my mind. Now I don't do that. Now I sit there and I go, it is what it is. It is what it is. I had a bad meeting today at work. It is what it is. I didn't hit that PR today. It is what it is. Because then I'm not pushing myself back, I'm not telling myself that I don't care and that you should give up and, I, and, and I'm not using negative words anymore. Instead, I'm just saying it is what it is and you can always work on that. Right, so this is the point where I have to tag people. Thank you very much, by the way, for just tuning in on this because this was very much last minute. The sun's going down, so I have no idea what this looks like. Um, you know, it's nearly 10 o'clock in the evening. So I get to tag some people now. Tori from Tori Re, because she's an absolute babe and she, what you'll hear from these questions from her mouth would be incredible. And then also, I'm gonna see if it works or not. Um, I'm gonna go for Alex Crockford. So from Alex Crockford Fitness, I think. Um, because he's a really influential guy and I think he would, make a very good video out of this so I'm only gonna go for two and hopefully you guys are gonna see a little bit more of my actual face like physically here right now instead of a picture of me and a podcast so thank you again so much for tuning into the video have an amazing rest of the week I know I am if this weather keeps up and I love you loads you're my amazing little family and I'll see you soon bye guys